There we go. Um, we'll give people a couple more minutes to, to get in. So I guess I realized the recording, I it's my make sure my background looks OK and all that. It's going to be recorded for posterity. And my notes. Um, let's see. By the way, just because we're recording doesn't mean you can't ask, and, uh, ask questions. Oh, yeah. No, sorry. I was just looking over at my notes, but feel free to, if anybody else, if if you're just listening, that's fine. And if you would like to say hello, Mark or Christina, that's okay, too. Um, I know sometimes I, that's one of the, been, been one of the benefits of, uh, all sorts of meetings and things moving to virtual format during the pandemic is that I've actually been able to be a part of a lot. Like my wife uh, is a teacher and like she has, you know, been able to be home, but like go listen in on the school board meeting, um, which she normally wouldn't have gone to at seven o'clock in the evening when it's almost bedtime for her kids. And, but she's able to actually, actually hear what's being said. And, um, so I understand if you want to just listen, at least right now. Uh, yeah, let's see. I know Mark is in Germany and you, you, you're in, um, you're in Montreal and, and anybody else want to, I don't know where everybody else is. So, so. hi Wayne. There's Chris. So we'll, um, it's, it's time. It, so why don't we get started? And I was thinking, um, so welcome. Um, thanks to Yuliu for asking me to do this. Um, uh, just a Q and A about um, going through launch school while being a parent and um, uh, my experience is, is one experience, and I'm sure um, those of you who are also parents have probably some similarities, and, and every situation is different, though. So hopefully, um, you know, I, I'm, I can just share what my experience is and what I've learned, um, and that's, I would welcome anybody else who has a similar or different experience to also, you know, share something um, because I, I hopefully we'll have a little just discussion time too. Um, and I was thinking what I could do is just start off by um, kind of giving my background a little bit and how I ended up in launch school and just a little bit about like my journey through core so far. Um, and so that we kind of have a good basis for, um, for any questions that you might have. Um, <clears throat> so I've always liked computers. I, I, started programming in basic on the Apple IIe <laughs> that my dad had bought and um, did little programs like that in um, elementary school even, I think. And um, built my first website in the 90s uh, when I was in middle school and high school. And then um, actually did study a little bit of computer science in college and then decided to focus on music, which I don't regret at all. Um, I knew that the music school experience would be much harder re to recreate somewhere else than um, learning to program later in life. Um, and so studied music and eventually got my master's in music therapy and worked as a music therapist for about five years. Um, and when my second kid was born uh, two and a half years ago, um, that fall, we decided that I was gonna be the one to stay home rather than pay for two kids and take care. So, um, I was home with them um, through winter of 2019 and 2020, and right before everything started to shut down, I actually was got interested in, in saying, hey, I used to like this, and I found a lecture online um, uh, about programming and, and kind of dove in and took some free online courses and, 
and actually it was kind of a good source of sanity um, during the craziness that was spring of 2020 for me and also the craziness of having a at that point a one and a three-year-old um it was something that i could just kind of put my logic hat on and and solve a problem um that was that was solvable and um <clears throat> so it was really good for me um and for a while it was just kind of a hobby and i thought oh maybe i'll build something cool or, and that fall uh last fall so almost a year ago um i decided to get a little bit more serious about it and and kind of had to make the choice of how much time do i want to devote to this and is this going to be just a hobby that i keep doing a little bit or is this going to be something that i actually pursue as a career change and so um I was talking it over with my wife and 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 actually I had posted a, a question on Reddit somewhere asking for advice and somebody said you should do a, a boot camp and I said well I don't know that that's really going to work in my schedule and they they were kind of really dismissive about it and they said well I don't think I don't think you're going to learn enough in time I wanted to maybe be able to get a job in about a year um, from last fall and um, they're pretty dismissive and kind of uh, uh discouraging and they said well you're probably out of luck then and so then that got me thinking more seriously about looking for self-paced options and that's when i found launch school um and i, I came i found launch school because i wanted something self-paced um but then as soon as i started reading about the mastery-based learning and the results and everything i was like yes this is it um it took a little while to convince my wife that um, I had been taking all these free courses and now that I should pay for something. But as she saw the prep materials and saw what I how devoted I was to doing that, um, and and I, I let her read a lot of more of the materials, we we worked it out and figured out how we were going to do that. So I started core at the end of October last year, and um, with any luck, that's uh, that's my goal for finishing up to then do the January capstone cohort um so um i'll talk a little bit about just my journey through core um and and some of this is really specific i think to my um to my situation my wife's a teacher so she gets some longer breaks um and we um also were able to in january have some more help from um some family with the kids so January and a lot of February of this year, um, I was able to um, have my kids with my my parents for a little bit and um, and devote some more time to my studies. So I've kind of had a um, a a series of of sprints, I guess, in in my launch school journey, um, which I know that's not necessarily the case for everybody, but um, really that January and February timeframe, I I moved through both the 120 and 130 courses in about seven weeks there, um, or actually a little bit less because some of that time was um, holiday time with family. And then this summer, um, when my wife was on summer break, I really pushed to get through as much as I could. So um, I'd say that's a pro as far as launch school, how launch school is structured, um, that has worked really well for me as a parent because, you know, everything, things are really can be unpredictable as a parent you have a sick kid and you can't uh you can't study as much or you really need to devote your time to them um or you know there's just odd hours <laughs> that you have available um and so that's been really a pro for me is the flexible schedule and pace you know um i there's never like an exam date that's set um ahead of time that's going to come whether i'm ready or not i can always just take the exam when I'm ready. Um, another pro is that the cost was just reasonable, like that if I, you know, got a few months in and it wasn't for me, it wasn't going to mess up our whole family finances. Um, and that the having for me having the structure and the focus of the curriculum, you know, they say a lot in the beginning of the curriculum to, to not go down rabbit holes and i've been relatively successful with that um i actually wish that i had more time to go down rabbit holes but i've, I've been really pretty focused on getting through core and trusting the process here um that they're going to teach me the things that i need to know and then i have time later to do all the other stuff um 
as far as I was trying to be fair and think about cons, um, I, th I think the flexible schedule and pace is a con sometimes because, um, you know, that you have to know yourself and you have to make your own deadlines and have to really um, get, have that motivation internally. So um, I think by the time you get into core and have done the prep material, you, you kind of know that and um, you kind of have, I know I honed my study skills. Um, I'm not perfect but by any means, but um, um, I think that there have been times where sometimes I need a little deadline um, and that would be helpful to me. Um, but obviously I've been successful so far. Um, so I think that I will open that up. That's kind of the background. And I see we've got more people to join. So I'd love to open it up for anybody who's got questions. There are a few that came in on Slack, but maybe I'll start off with any that, that you all have and um, pepper those in as, as, as needed if they're not already covered. I guess are we just doing, I, I think we can just do unmute or if you'd prefer to, um, put a question in the chat, that's fine too. Hey Josh, it's Mark, Mark. from Berlin. Um, hey everyone. Uh, I was wondering how you and your wife were um, dividing up your time when, core, uh, when Capstone starts for you. Because right. uh, is she doing all the work, the housework, the kids, the, the actual, work at school and, and you just focus on, on Capstone? Have you talked with her about this? Right, we, yeah, we've, we've had a lot of discussions. Um, so, so for reference, up until this fall, up until just a few weeks ago, I've mainly been home with the kids and, um, and we share a lot of the housework, but, but um, uh, a lot of a lot of things like grocery shopping and and some a lot of the meal prep and stuff that's been kind of my responsibility, um, primarily. Except when then she's on break and I focus on launch school. Um, but the kids have not been in daycare. The, uh, our daughter had gone a little bit right before COVID, um, and then has not. They, neither of them have been any place since then. Um, she started full time in preschool this year. And um, my son will actually be old enough in about a month to start as well. So we've kind of set that up um, for them to be going when I start Capstone. The plan, we'll see how this goes. The plan is for, I'll, um, the way the Capstone kind of schedule works, it's, it's based around Pacific time and I'm on Eastern. And so hopefully um, I'll be able to, you know, have, Typically, my study schedule right now is I try to get up in the morning early before everybody gets up. Um, so I typically get up between five and six and um, kind of get ready and then and then do some studying for an hour to two hours, depending on what time I wake up and what time they all wake up. Um, and then um, so I, I want to continue that in Capstone and then I'll have probably two hours or so that are an hour to two hours was just just focus on getting the kids off to school and then hopefully I'll be back here about nine and ready to go for my my work day and then since I'll be working from home if there's if I need to take a little break from capstone mental break and chop some veggies for dinner or something that's that's the goal is to be able to handle some of that stuff in the little breaks um and and hopefully have enough flexibility that um, have some evening time with the family. Um, so the kids being at school all day will be a big thing. Um, my wife knows that she'll be taking on more things around here. Um, and we're just gonna kind of see how it goes. You know, it's, it'll be the, the really intense part is about four months long. Um, and so, we just know that January through April next year is, is going to be probably, probably more like January into May um, is going to be particularly intense. But um, you know, we believe in the in the outcome and the goal um, that it's going to actually help us in the long run. So um, yeah, everybody's situation is different, but that's kind of how we've we've thought it through. Is that um, is that hopefully I can uh, can 
kind of take mornings and and get the kids taken care of and and get house stuff taken care of and then and then she's on when she gets home from work so any other questions Maybe we can go ahead with the questions that were sent via message. Sure. So let's see, Michael Peters said, what has worked, he had three questions. So what has worked for you schedule wise? So I, I talked a little bit about that. Um, you know, in a general sense, what I found is that I really like the self-paced and, and being able to move however fast or slow I need to. Um, to a point. And then once I'm getting towards the end of a course, then I then I really have to like get really clear because you know the 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 launch school exams, the three hour um written exams, that three hours that are uninterrupted that are not after my kids' bedtime when I am not in a mental state to be taking an exam, um, that can be really, really hard to come by. Um, and so I have to be pretty strategic. And, and honestly, there's sometimes where I've had to push myself to say, well, this is the day that I can take this exam. And, um, and so then I kind of plan out the rest of the week. So that, I, I don't do that at the beginning of course. I kind of have a vague idea of like how long I'd like this course to take, but I, I really do take to heart the idea of not, um, of not putting too many time expectations. But then when I do get to an end of a course, then I say, okay, <clears throat> I really, I, I know how long studying usually takes me. I, I see where I'm, my holes are. I know how long that might take me. So I'm going to set this date. And I could always move it if I'm really not ready. In fact, I think one, one exam, I kept driving my wife crazy because I said, I think I'm going to take it in two days. And then it'd be the night before. And I said, I, no, I'm going to take it like the next available opportunity. Um, but I've gotten better at that as I've gone on. Which um, one was that? I don't remember. I, I know I did that with, with the first one, but then I think there was one more that um, I just kept not feeling ready. I feel maybe it was networking, maybe it was 171. Um, and so the I, I think I've gotten much more efficient with my studying and 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 just much more able to predict how long something's going to take me and, and just also more confident um, in, in my ability to retain things. And, and, and honestly, taking those written exams is a skill in itself. Um, so I think the first few exams, you're still actually practicing the skill. You're, you're, you're learning the material, but you're also practicing the skill of taking the exam. Um, so in a general sense, that kind of schedule of being fairly loose within the course, um, letting life to a certain extent dictate, um, say, oh, you know what, I can't study much this week because I'm gonna be um, devoted to the kids um, for, or, or whatever's happening. But then once I get to the end of kind of setting a deadline for myself, um, I don't necessarily recommend that in the first, in, in 109, because you're not, you just don't know yet. You should really take the time to overlearn every, everything and really um, over prepare. But as I've moved on, I've, I've done less, I've been preparing, but less over preparing. In the day to day, um, you know, when I first started launch school, um, we, we kind of sat down and mapped out, okay, where are these 15 or so hours going to come from, you know, I think in the prep material, they say 15 to 20 is a good thing to shoot for any less than 10. And you're going to be kind of forgetting faster than you learn. Um, so we kind of mapped out if I, if I do an hour to two in the mornings, and then I don't always get time in the afternoons, but um, try to get another hour, most afternoons or evenings. Um, then that gets me to my 10 pretty quickly um, as the minimum. And then a lot of, for a lot of the core, I was doing like longer stretches on Saturday mornings um, and then leaving Sunday mostly as a, as a rest day, as a family day. Um, and even Saturdays was, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd 
still get up at six and work until noon. So that's kind of how I got my um, my big my time in. And then there were other times where we had more help with childcare or my wife was off and I could, you know, um, for a lot of the summer, I basically worked like sticks to noon almost every day for six days a week. And I was getting, you know, more like 30, 35 hours in. Um, so for me, I, I was never an early riser ever. <laughs> um, I, I, I always enjoyed being up early, but I hated getting up early. And I rarely, um, rarely would be consistent with that. And really for, since I started prep, um, I think that's how my wife knew I was serious about this because I would just, I wouldn't even set an alarm sometimes. I just got in the habit and I would just wake up at five, five thirty, and come down and study. Um, and something that was really important for me in making that consistent was that I have a, like kind of a ritual that has nothing to do with launch school, nothing that I have to think about. I come down, I start the water for coffee, get it ground up ready for the French press, like put away dishes from the dishwasher, pour the water. Like I have the thing that I don't have to think about. So the first, I don't, I don't have to decide what I'm gonna do when I get up. Um, and, and actually we were staying somewhere else for a little bit of time and they had an automatic coffee maker and I was not actually, even though the coffee was already ready, I thought that would be, oh, that'll get me out of bed. It didn't work. Um, so I think whatever, if, if you are trying to get up early because that's the time you've got, um, I think having the thing that you do that you're not resistant to doing, um, that is pretty mindless. So that's just what I do in the morning. I get up and I make coffee and I put away dishes. <laughs> and by the time I'm done with that routine, you know, sometimes I'll listen to something while I do it. And then I'm, I'm woken up, I'm ready to sit down and, and start studying. Um, so that's worked for me. Um, I, I know everybody's different in that, but um, I don't know if anybody else has had a success in terms of their schedule. Um, I think that the big deal for me was the mornings was the only time I knew I could usually count on um when the kids were home all day anyway um so that's kind of my sacred quiet time um josh that's a quick follow-up on that um so sure. I, I found that pretty uh, fascinating like uh, there's a lot of like writers on habits and how to inculcate those habits that are automatic as you said or mindless and um, was that something you consciously were working on? I know like James Clear, like he's got a book out on habits that, you know, did quite well and it touches upon a lot of these things you read. How did you establish those habits? Um, to be honest, I, I came across them a little bit by accident. And I think it wasn't until we were staying in that place with the automatic coffee maker that I realized how important the, just the, the kind of automatic and the and the, the the not having to think about it was um i did read um i'm forgetting the author's name but atomic habits um yeah James and Clare. oh okay the same okay um oh is that the, the sorry pretty, i thought you said something else um no that's pretty cool yeah sorry um yeah so i did um read and 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 i can't say that i have applied that book as much as i'd like to my life um but i think that did influence things and then just um the mastery book that they they have you read at the beginning i um i listened to a lot of that on um i think i was able to get the audiobook through my library and um and listen to it uh which i think i did it twice i i, I came back to it partway and to core and um and actually i was just thinking today that it might be a good idea to do that again because um, although there's some parts that didn't totally um, fit with me, just the, the simplicity of it and the, the idea, I remember um, one part that of, of saying when you're, when you're resistant, when you feel yourself resisting and when you like fail at a new habit, that's actually can, can be evidence that you are changing because we, we um, our, our bodies and minds seek equilibrium. And so if you're pushing yourself into something new, then parts of you are going to resist that change and you have to get over that. And that was, I think that was a really huge thing for me too. So 
when I didn't get up early for a day or two in a row, I just said, okay, that's, you know, it, that's part of the process and then just go back to it. Um, so I think, I think that that was another important piece for me. Any others? Uh, by the way, this is meant to be, or it can be also more of a round table than uh, yeah. <clears throat> this discussion than just a QA one way. If others have uh, want to add something, uh, just a, a story, a piece of knowledge to what Josh, do, Josh is saying or uh, answer their question in their own way, uh, feel free to raise your hand as well. Yeah, I'd love that. And um, especially, I think I see a few names who, are, if I'm not mistaken, have gone through Capstone. So um, I don't know if you all had children going through Capstone, but um, if if that's uh, something you can speak to at all, I'd love, I'd love to hear that. Um, yeah, I went through Capstone, but I didn't have any kids or a partner at the time. I did have yeah. a Capstone uh, teammate who had kids mm -hmm. and um, I think the, one of the things that Chris mentioned that I remember was that uh, to, because he had all of these responsibilities he was super efficient uh, how he was doing can you hear me? Can, can you hear me? Uh, you're cutting in and out just a little bit so I was trying to I was okay. following sorry um, actually I'm on holiday right now so I'm my uh, sound might be a little choppy. I'll I put something in chat. There. Okay. Um, Thank you. If anybody else has something you like to speak to on on schedule and habits, um, uh, jump in. Or there's a few more questions that came in on Slack too. Uh, I'm curious to ask the audience. Uh, do, do you? Uh, not have questions in mind, or are you shy because we're <laughs> recording? Uh, you you can answer in the chat, if you, please. I will. Um, I think I'll. The next question that came in on Slack was, um, "How do you and your partner negotiate what's most important when you find you both want to work at the same time?" Um, we, I won't say that never happens that we both want to work at the same time. We've, we've gotten pretty clear, you know, I have my morning time. Um, she's, uh, she has more of the, I mean, it's not nine to five, but she currently now goes to the building for a lot of last year, she was at home, um, and works and, and Luckily, her role at the school is actually doesn't have a ton of work to bring home, but we just have to be really clear about, okay, what do you need? Um, I, I'm not a huge fan of tracking my time. I know a lot of people track their hours and I started off with lunch school doing that and um, thinking that it would be important to keep on track. Um, and I found that it was actually, I, I kept forgetting to do it. I felt like it was this thing that I just wasn't good at and it wasn't really helping me that much. But I think one of the benefits when I was doing it was kind of seeing like, I, I really like studying. I actually really like this material and, and I can sometimes want to do it more than, um, more than uh, I should. Um, sometimes I, I especially when there's other things in my life, like I, I don't know what to do next. Um, launch school, I always do know what to do next. So I can, uh, I can sometimes ignore other things. So I think one actually a benefit for tracking is not only to, to see how much, um, if I'm doing enough, but sometimes like when I have done enough and I should turn off the computer and, and go do something else or, or say, oh no, I really, I've really only gotten like eight hours in this week and I need to do that. So she's been great about being, being on the same page about how much, how much am I devoting to this? Um, how much are we willing to sacrifice family time? 
um, where's where's the lines and and just trying to be really open and, and communicating about when is her time to work when is my time to work um, how how we divide that up I don't know that there's one good way to do that um, it, it really depends on your situation and your um, partner other than just trying to be really clear and kind of have the business meetings you know once a week or more often about okay what do you what do you need what do I need how can we make all that work um, and and finding time I mean this is hard as parents but finding time to have just time together not only family time but just um, time with your partner as well um, so let's see I think um, all right said he said i had a teammate go through capstone and did it while having kids one thing chris mentioned was that the person was super efficient with their time and did all the work without overthinking things so maybe efficiency you had to develop during core might carry over juggling responsibilities um oh you say i imagine having kids and trying to juggle responsibilities someday and it's great to have examples like yours and mine well thanks yeah um that's actually something you know i I've, I've been trying to be very focused. There have been times where I've moved very quickly, um, but I've been trying to not be too focused on how fast I'm going, but be focused on how efficient I'm being. Um, and I'm not always great at that, but um, when I'm at my best, I'm just, I'm, I'm moving through things efficiently, which is not necessarily mean getting to the next lesson as fast as possible. Um, it, it's, it's a balance of, of knowing when to move forward, trusting that some of my understanding will come as I move forward, and when to when to go back and dig in and try some examples of my own, um, and and you know take notes in a way that will be efficient and, and useful later on. Um, and so, I think that the efficiency is going to be a big thing, um, especially in capstone. Is to, I think you said, not overthink things. Um, and and that, that's kind of where I've gotten to with the assessments. I try not to overthink them. Um, I I look at the study guide. I make sure I have. I feel like I've got a firm understanding. Anything that I'm not quite sure about, I I I I practice and I study and I try to um, work with somebody else too um, to test that understanding. And then and then I do it. Um, so I'd say in 109, I was I felt like. Looking back now, I can say I was probably like 150% prepared. Um, and now, depending on just timing of my life, um, uh, is, you know, I'll, I'll, as long as I feel like 95% or more prepared, I trust my, I trust the process and my, my own feeling of my understanding that's just gotten better. Um, and, you know, I don't ever want to, do poorly on an exam, and I haven't yet, luckily. Um, but uh, I, I also trust that, like, yeah, I know that I can pass this, and I know that because um, a lot of times it's it's better to get it done and then iterate. Um, so exams are a little different because you don't have a chance to iterate, but for other work, you can you can just get it done and then make it better when you have time later. I was, I, I'm wondering what other um, folks, I know we've got a few people who have literally just started and some who are finished and some who are in a similar place to me, I think. So if there's any other ideas about, about efficiency, um, and I, I think that's one of the, the big things for me is, is focusing on that efficiency um, and how how to structure your, for, for me, I know that how I structure my life has a lot to do with how efficient I am or, or has a big bearing on how efficient I am. And what I mean by that is if I'm, if I'm doing other things outside of launch school that are, are generally good for me, like getting some exercise and taking breaks and, and trying to get the best sleep I can with the two and a four year old in the house, um, then 
I'm just naturally much more efficient and organized. Um, so I don't know if anybody else has thoughts on that. Of what are the things for you that are help you be efficient? Um, well, feel free to jump in if there's anything else. Uh, from Bharat, uh, you know, so have you had a discussion with your partner about how things might change for Capstone? Yes. Um, we, I don't, you, maybe you came on the call uh, after Mark had asked about Capstone, and, and um, we'll try to. Um, my, the, the big change has been this fall and will be actually in October when my son starts also going to school full time. Our daughter started a couple weeks ago and then our son um, is going to be starting in October when he's two and a half. Um, and so, um, um, so I'm trying to structure our, once he starts going, I'll be trying to structure all my capstone prep very similarly to how capstone will be which is kind of some study time in the morning, um, get kids to school, have a little bit of time in there to like run an errand and then get back to like work all day. Um, and so that's, um, that's kind of how hopefully things are gonna change. Um, she knows that she's gonna be on a lot more and a lot more solo um, cause, because right now, um, because of the self-paced nature, if things are just going crazy and I'm not taking an exam or something. I, I, I go out and, you know, I help out. Um, and so that's been a nice thing during core, um, but it'll change during capstone. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll, I'll have to report back in, in six months or eight months or whenever it is and, and see how it goes. Um, Dorothy asked the question, did you ever find it helpful to try to do flashcards or other studying during small moments of free time? Um, if your kids were unexpectedly entertaining themselves or something, um, or is it more helpful to just have clear boundaries between study and family time? Um, I, I am not great about the clear boundaries, um, especially like if I'm working through something, like if I'm doing the 21 project or tic-tac-toe and I, I'm trying to solve a bug, um, sometimes like the kids will be watching a show and I'll, I'll, I'll just get it out, um, and try to solve that thing. That's, that's something that I, I am trying to be better about. And I know that I'll have to be really good during capstone, um, to when it's off, it's off because they're going to have less of me. Um, but, um, also, the, the flashcards, um, yeah, I think that um, I do use Anki cards, um, especially in the beginning, I use them a lot. Um, and it was nice, like, uh, in fact, when I was studying for 109, um, we, I would pull some questions up as we were going for walks around the neighborhood. And, um, and I, I just say to my daughter, who's very precocious, and she was three and a half at the time, and um, I say, okay, Ellie, I'm going to explain this to you. Um, and, and then she started asking me about who Ruby was and, um, and why I was talking about Ruby, because we know people, we know somebody named Ruby too. And, um, and so that was a funny thing. Um, and then she also came up with her own, we have like a little uh, defunct Bluetooth keyboard um, that she likes to pretend is her computer and she does work. And then she was telling me that she was she was writing things in a, in a language called Program Pete. Um, and so there was a few weeks where she was telling me about the new program that she was writing in Program Pete. So um, the next generation of programmers is there. Um, as far as, um, I, I, I find it really, uh, I need to have blocks of time. I, I find it really hard to take on new concepts unless I have like a, at least like a 45 minute chunk or an hour chunk that I, I am pretty certain I'm not gonna be interrupted. Um, and then sometimes you do need more like 
two, three, four hour chunks, especially when we're working on a coding project. Um, so I found it really crucial to, to schedule those times and to know and be able to count on those. But then I, I also used some of that time to be to prepare myself to be ready for the little blocks of time. So um, having Anki cards ready. And then also this I didn't hit on until partway into core, but um, I'm not the best note taker in the world. I, 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 I don't love taking notes. I haven't found them as helpful in, in my academic career as some people, but um, doing question and answer based notes is the only time I've really found um, uh, note taking really helpful. And so what I mean by that is, is I'll read a paragraph or a section and, and say, you know, what question is this section answering? And then write that question out and then try and without refer back to um, the written material, unless I have to try to write out in my own words, the answer to that question. So basically what I just read, I write the question that that answered or the questions and then write my own answer. And that's part of what I mean by being efficient is that then I've just done recall right then. And um, I have something that's ready to go as far as review. Um, and some of the questions when you get further along, you're like, oh, that was not a, that was not a good question. Your understanding gets better. Um, but for, um, for a lot of it, it's, it, you go through and you, you, you get to do those questions again. And um, there's lots of different tools. I use Notion, which allows you to have a, like a toggle. So you can have the question and the answer hidden, and then you hit the toggle and it'll show you the answer. Um, so those are things that I can break out when I have that 10 minutes. And um, I find that those little chunks of time are really good for review. Um, and then pretty much any time there's a video, um, I download it to my phone um, so that it's not always the most efficient thing to, to um, a lot of times I want to be in front of the computer for those, but sometimes I'll watch it once and kind of get the gist. And then I, I don't have to go back as much when I'm watching it and, and doing it in front of the computer. So um, I don't know if those things have actually made me more efficient, but um, that's what, that's what I've done. So your, your mileage may vary. Um, there's one more question. How do you know you're giving your children and family enough of your time? Um, you know, I think, I think for me, it's a little bit less about enough time period, um, but trying to be really present when I am there. And um, to be honest, since my daughter started going to school, I, I, I feel like it's been a lot better. Um, but our plan was always for me to stay home with the kids. But when COVID hit, then I was home all the time with them all the time. And there weren't really that many babysitting options or play date options. And, and I definitely felt burnt out um, on that. And so I think often the quantity of time was a lot, <laughs> um, maybe too much for all of us, but the quality wasn't as great. And I think um, having time to focus on launch school and other things that I need to focus on um, where I'm not thinking about the kids as much allows me to make the quantity better. Um, when I was tracking my time also, I, I kind of, we kind of set like, okay, my minimum goal is 15. If it drops below that, that's fine. But so it was kind of for us when we discussed um, how much time I was going to put into this, 15 was kind of the, the, the place where I was trying to get to and was willing to sacrifice family time, um, particularly for all of us together. Um, and then if I got more than that, great. Um, and if I sometimes dropped below that, you know, that was okay too, but 15 was the goal. And that was like saying, yeah, I'm not going to spend Saturday morning, like 
my wife is going to be on Saturday morning so I can get to that 15 hours. Um, so I think those are two things is, is focusing on the, the quality of the time. Um, and then also kind of knowing where the boundaries are in terms of the actual quantity that you're going to spend on lunch school. Um, and that's personal to everybody. So um, any other questions or thoughts, especially in that arena? That's, I think, a really um, tough one, balancing those things. So I'd love to hear. I feel like that's probably that boundary between study programming time and family time. Um, keeping the healthy boundary there is one of my weak points, probably. By the way, uh, there's also another question from Dean Wan. Uh, oh, yes. I did have that. That was up above the other ones. So um, it seems like most people are um, preferring to stay on mute, which is totally fine. Um, so he said, tips, tricks, and wisdom on how you re I think he might mean reviewed. He said revised, but I think it means reviewed older material from previous modules as you progress through the course. Um, also interested in the percentage of time you spent in a given week revising old material. Um, so every, every chance that I can, I try to lead a spot session. Um, my, over the summer, I was doing a fair amount of it um, because my schedule was just more flexible. Um, and even on weeks where I maybe didn't have as much time, I would still try to do it because it's so valuable to like get thrown back into something you did six months ago and, um, and realize that you're a little rusty on some of the terminology. Like I was trying to, you know, I, I, I let a Ruby session and all this JavaScript terminology came coming out and I said, no, wait, no. In Ruby, it's called this and in, in this, but then to realize, oh no, I, I really do still remember that stuff. Um, so I, other than leading spot sessions um, and going back as necessary for like whatever I'm studying or trying to build in the moment, um, I don't necessarily devote a certain percentage of time to review. Um, but I think I think working with others, so whether it's a spot session or whether it's just reaching to somebody who is in one of the courses before you, um, um, I think that that's to me that's the best way. Um, I don't, I wouldn't be able to just say, okay, for these two hours, I'm going to go back through the, my notes for the previous courses and do that. I, I really need something more engaging and dynamic and, and live. Um, so um, it's funny, this morning I actually started a, like just a little spike on an idea for something that I've been wanting to do. And so I decided to do it in Ruby. Um, and, and it was a little painful for the first hour or so as because I was putting console.logs all over my Ruby code and putting semicolons and then, and, um, but that was, that's not so much that I didn't know it. It's just, uh, it's like s switching a dialect and um, having been unfamiliar. So um, I think my tip, my wisdom is just, is, is work with other people. Um, and particularly whether it's in a structured format or just one-on-one -on -one, um, with people who are earlier on in the courses than you um, so that you have to review. And so if you're the type of person who puts in a fair amount of prep to something like that, that'll, that'll be good. And I, I usually look over my notes and get my list of questions or things from the spot wiki. Um, and just just kind of do the quick glance over and say, yep, I know this. And, and to be honest about the fact that you're not an expert. Um, I, I think that um, one of the things I'm learning is that you as a developer, um, there are certain fundamental things that you just need to know and you need to really have mastery over. And there's a whole lot of other things that, if, that there's documentation for. And I think one of the fundamental skills is to 
be able to go really quickly and look in the documentation. So um, there's, there were a bunch of Ruby methods that I, I just didn't remember. And if I was writing Ruby every day, it would be no problem. Um, I'm not gonna spend the time to memorize everything from those courses. I know it's there. I know where I can find it. It took me about probably 15, 20 seconds to find the thing that I needed. I didn't get out of my flow and I, I went on my way and now it's fresh in my mind again. Um, so I think, um, I think that's one of the big things. And, and, and I've, I've used them less, um, but Anki cards have been good for certain things. I'm, I'm still learning about what is useful long-term in my Anki deck. Um, it was really, really useful for um, certain things that, what I found it really useful for particularly is commands or methods that don't come up all that often. So if I if I am if I search for something and I know that I've searched for it before, um, that's often when I put it in my Anki deck. That means I'm not using it often enough to remember it, um, just naturally through repetition. And so I need an ex ex external tool to help me remember it. So um, I know some people use it a lot more than that, but um, so I guess those are my tips tricks and wisdom on, on reviewing and, and retaining things. Um, it looks like um, we're, all, we're hitting 50 minutes for the uh, QA. Uh, do, do you wanna end it at an hour, Josh? Sh sure, sure. Or yeah, if there's any other questions for in the chat or... Um, it's just double checking over on Slack, but I don't see anything else there right now. I don't think. Hi, Josh, and maybe also hi, Layer. Um, I have a quick question for you guys because you guys are both uh, headed into the next uh, capstone cohort. Um, how it is the you know in your among the cohort? How do you how are you grouped together into your project? Do you find each other? Is it you know a general discussion? And then you kind of um, brainstorm ideas and then people, you know, cluster around particular ideas. Yulia, you might, you might know more. I don't know if we, we were having this discussion a little bit. Um, there are sometimes teams formed before starting the cohort. Um, I don't know that that's the norm. I think, I think that I know I've heard of two teams. There might be more that have done that since I've been around, and um, and and that's great. I think when you have a group that works um, well together, then that's great. But I think normally, I don't know what uh, magic formula they have that gets people together. I think some of it's time zone, and some of it might be. Do you know what else? Um. Yeah, like Bharat is saying in the chat, like you're told your team when you start like prep when you're accepted. Uh, and usually that's the team what you stick with. That's what uh, I've gotten from a, a, a capstone grad I asked. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I suggest Nirab you uh, ask Launch Cool support because they'll give you the full details uh, since Josh Shua and I aren't like kind of technically in Capstone yet. We don't really know much. We know uh, about the details of how things work like that. Uh, yeah. But uh, kind of like to answer kind of a side question, J Joshua and I just decided to sort of leave it up to the Launch School team to group us uh, so, so far. Uh, yeah. Because at least my reasoning is like, I feel if if I wanted to go in with a team, then I want us already to be like some cohesive group. I don't want it to be like, oh, like I like that guy, I like that girl, and let's just all get together. <laughs> and for for me, there's no point to that. But I like uh, I think on the Launch Cool podcast, there are a couple of stories of people, uh, sort of becoming close friends during core. And then they just ask like, okay, let's keep that going and capstone. And that worked very well for them. 
Uh, I see Virat is, is saying time zone. And actually, that's one thing that I'm going to actually specifically, to the extent that I request something, I, I, I would much prefer to be um, with people in East or maybe Central time or even in European time, because I think um, when I talked to Chris about doing Capstone and I said, you know, the, some of them, and this could all change, everything's subject to change for each cohort. So I don't want anybody here to take that. This is, oh, Josh said this and that's the way it is. Um, when you get about halfway through the curriculum, there's, um, there's information about Capstone and a lot more in depth than you'll learn it then. Um, what it will likely be for your cohort. But, um, you know, they say block off 11, well, for my time zone, it would be 11 to eight. So eight to five Pacific time. Um, and I know that typically in the past, the morning of that, the eight to noon Pacific time has been kind of the synchronous class time. Um, and I said, I can be available during those times. And what I'd really like, one of the things that's important to me is to like eat dinner with my family. Um, and we can be flexible on time. We can be flexible that maybe there are some nights that I don't do it, but, um, and not that it would have been a deal breaker if I just, nope, you gotta be there until eight every night. <laughs> um, but, and he said, well, yeah, I mean, he said a lot of times that especially, you know, teams that are all on the East Coast, sometimes they'll meet before the synchronous time, at, you know, cause that's 11 their time. So I hope, um, I think, one thing that will be help me have balance and be successful is to be on a team that is 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 more geared towards the morning my morning <laughs> um so whether it's somebody in europe or east coast um just so that once we whenever we do have the freedom to kind of choose our own times that we can do like oh yeah let's meet from 9 to 11 before the class today and then we can do more stuff in the afternoon and do evenings when they have to but um try to shift everything a little bit that way when possible. So. Thank you, that's really helpful. Yeah, my, um, my, my high school chemistry teacher, when we chose our lab groups, he always said, he said, remember what I always say is you need to choose three friends and a smart person. Um, so I, uh, it, <laughs> he always, uh, it was like choose choose three people that are going to get along with, but make sure you have the smart person that's uh, going to going to carry the team. He, he said that kind of jokingly, but I think um, yeah, I trust. I haven't met anybody in in launch school that I haven't liked and gotten along with and thought would be, especially as you get into the later courses. Everybody's really capable, um, so I I trust that probably every team has some um, some bumps along the way, and but I I. I don't, um, I don't foresee, I probably you could randomly make up teams and other than the time zone issues, um, probably any team could build something amazing. All right. Um, maybe we do one last call for questions. Sure. Uh, everyone, your last chance. I'll, Let me I'll, just, I'll, I'll, I'll peek back at my notes and see if there are other. Yeah, I think we got through. Oh, did I? I was hoping to, to get through. And I, I think I'll just, maybe I'll just close by kind of saying, you know, um, when we first were discussing launch school, um, I, I talked a lot about, you know, the, the salary that is kind of, it's not promised, but it's, it's strongly implied that if you can do core and you can get through capstone, you're almost certainly going to land a really good job. Um, and, you know, I, I started getting back into programming because it was, it was actually something that was really helping me keep my sanity. Um, it was using a side of my brain, um, that I hadn't used in a long time. And it felt really good to be able to solve problems and do things logically. And um, um, coming from being a musician and music therapist and working with people, and I love that side of myself too. Um,
but honestly, the, the one of the reasons I really chose this path was was my career trajectory there was just not going to end up taking me where I wanted to be financially. And so some of the sacrifices, especially that we're going to have coming up here um, with Capstone in terms of our family time, hopefully um, will be paid off with being able to be just more financially secure and um, and th that will enable our family to do other things that we we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. I love our life right now. Um, we're getting by on a teacher's salary and um, and I teach some music lessons. And luckily we live in an area where that's possible, um, but it's not easy. And um, I think that um, the, the money was not the primary motivating factor, but it sure um, I think is something that I wanna be able to to provide some different things and then also be generous in other ways. Um, you know, we already know how to get by on, on the teacher's salary. And so we've, we've talked a lot about how do we, how, 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 in what ways do we want this to change our family life and in what ways do we not want to change? Um, and so I think that's something else to be really clear about in terms of the end goal. Um, and you know, what, what is the end goal? Why are you doing this? And for me, it's, having a career that is something I feel good at and something that I feel I'm compensated well for, if I'm gonna be spending time away from my family and um, I wanna be something that I not only enjoy, but also am well compensated for um, so that we can do other things that we wanna do. Um, and I think that's, that's the thing that really the, again, I don't wanna say promise, but the, the idea of that, that is, um, that I feel really confident in once I get through Capstone is, is kind of what's helped keep me going through all of this, um, in addition to just enjoying it and to liking solving the problems. So um, I think being really clear, I think that's one of the things is being really clear about your why of why you're doing this. Um, and um, that, that can get you a long way, so. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, I think... <laughs> thanks, Julio. Thanks, everybody. Um, feel free to reach out on Slack, um, or I guess if you're looking at this in the future, um, I'll probably still, I can't imagine a time where I wouldn't be around Launch School Slack, at least for the foreseeable future. So um, reach out if you got any questions or thoughts, um, I'd love to talk. Okay, terrific. Uh, so we'll close this uh, here. Thank you for uh, coming, everyone. Uh, and uh, thank you, Joshua, for doing this. You bet. Take care. Bye-bye, everyone.